Proverbs chapter 27 Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Let another man praise thee, and not thine own mouth, a stranger and not thine own lips. A stone is heavy, and the sand weighty, but a fool's wrath is heavier than them both. Wrath is cruel, and anger is outrageous, but who is able to stand before envy? Open rebuke is better than secret love. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. The full soul loatheth an honeycomb, but to the hungry soul every bitter thing is sweet. As a bird that wandereth from her nest, so is a man that wandereth from his place. Ointment and perfume rejoice the heart, so doth the sweetness of a man's friend by hearty counsel. Thine own friend and thy father's friend forsake not, neither go into thy brother's house in the day of thy calamity, for better is a neighbor that is near than a brother far off. My son, be wise, and make my heart glad that I may answer him that reproacheth me. A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. Take his garment that is surety for a stranger, and take a pledge of him for a strange woman. He that blesseth his friend with a loud voice, rising early in the morning, it shall be counted a curse to him. A continual dropping in a very rainy day, and a contentious woman are alike. Whosoever hideth her, hideth the wind, and the ointment of his right hand which bereath itself. Iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. Whoso keepeth the fig tree shall eat the fruit thereof, so he that waiteth on his master shall be honored. As in water face answereth to face, so the heart of man to man. Hell and destruction are never full, so the eyes of man are never satisfied. As the fining pot for silver and the furnace for gold, so is a man to his praise. Though thou shouldest bray a fool in a mortar among wheat with a pestle, yet will not his foolishness depart from him. Be thou diligent to know the state of thy flocks, and look well to thy herds. For riches are not forever, and doth the crown endure to every generation? The hay appeareth, and the tender grass showeth itself, and herbs of the mountains are gathered. The lambs are for thy clothing, and the goats are the price of the field. And thou shalt have goat's milk enough for thy food, for the food of thy household, and for the maintenance for thy maidens. Opening sentence. Proverbs 27 verse 1 Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. The king is the intended audience as noted by the words thyself, thou, thee, and thine. The Holy Spirit is inspiring the writer of Proverbs to instruct the king of Israel, who will instruct the people. In the book of Matthew, Jesus spoke of the sufficiency of trouble for the present day, and James, the leader of the church in Jerusalem, warned against boasting of tomorrow's gain. Matthew 6 verse 34 Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. James 4 verses 13 to 14 Go to now, ye that say, Today or tomorrow we will go into such a city, and continue there a year, and buy and sell, and get gain, whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. Suffiant praise. Proverbs 27 verse two, let another man praise thee and not thine own mouth, a stranger and not thine own lips. It would be better if a friend or even a stranger boasted about the king's accomplishments rather than boasting about them himself. The king is being instructed to be content. Hebrews 13 verse 5, Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Finding the theme, sufficiency and contentment. 
This chapter began with a hint to the king about contentment with his possessions because tomorrow's gain is not guaranteed. This chapter ends with instructions for the king to be content with food and clothing because physical wealth will not last forever. Overly sufficient. Proverbs 27 verse 3 a stone is heavy and the sand weighty, but a fool's wrath is heavier than them both. In context, a fool's wrath is the heavy and weighty words and proceed out of his mouth. These are difficult to bear. The heaviness can also refer to the fool's wrathful actions. Envy. Proverbs 27 verse 4 wrath is cruel and anger is outrageous, but who is able to stand before envy? As bad as a fool's wrath can be, envy is worse. The book of Proverbs gives several warnings against envy. Proverbs 3 verse 31, 14 verse 30, 23 17 and 24 colon 1, 19. Envy is a sin that leads to more sin as one endeavors to obtain what is not theirs. In this chapter, envy is lurking underneath man's lack of contentment. Job 5 verse 2 for wrath killeth the foolish man, and envy slayeth the silly one. Sufficient words of a friend. Proverbs 27 verses 5 to 6 open rebuke is better than secret love. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Friend is mentioned in this chapter five times, establishing friendship as a sub-theme. True friendship is characterized by speaking the truth. A true friend will speak true words, even when they hurt, an enemy will speak sweet and flattering words to get what he wants. Two examples from scripture which demonstrate this proverb is the Apostle Paul, who rebuked the Apostle Peter to his face, Galatians 2 verse 11. And Judas, who kissed Jesus when he betrayed him, Matthew 26 verse 49. Sufficient words of God. Proverbs 27 verse 7, the full soul loatheth in honeycomb, but to the hungry soul every bitter thing is sweet. The honeycomb represents the word of God. If the inner man is filled up with of the spirit of the world, 1 Corinthians 2 verse 12, Ephesians 2 verse 2, he will not hunger for the word of God. But the soul who hungers for the word of God will find even the bitter things therein sweet, knowing they are for his good. Discontented wandering. Proverbs 27 verse 8, As a bird that wandereth from her nest, so is a man that wandereth from his place. A bird wanders in search of food, Job 38 verse 41. In context, a man might be tempted to wander from his appointed office in search of the rich man's dainties, Proverbs 23 verse 3, or the strange woman's delicacies, Revelation 18. 3. Because of envy and covetousness of the things that he wants and discontentment with what he possesses. Sweet words. Proverbs 27 verse 9 ointment and perfume rejoice the heart, so doth the sweetness of a man's friend by hearty counsel. The sweet-smelling ointment in this proverb, by comparison, is the sweet words being spoken by a true friend. A near neighbor. Proverbs 27 verse 10 thine own friend, and thy father's friend, forsake not, neither go into thy brother's house in the day of thy calamity, for better is a neighbor that is near than a brother far off. This proverb is addressed to the king, as indicated by the words thine and thy. The day of thy calamity is very particular to the nation of Israel, as is the day of adversity, Proverbs 24 verse 10, and the time of trouble, Proverbs 25 verse 19. This is yet another reference to the great tribulation that will come upon Israel to purge out the unbelievers from among them. Believers in Israel are instructed to flee Judea and go into the mountains, Matthew 24. 15 to 21, while the believing rulers of Israel are instructed to go from house to house spreading the gospel of the kingdom until the end of the tribulation, Matthew 10 verses 5 to 23, Matthew 24 verse 24. Luke 24 verse 47, their faithful friends will offer them refuge, even those from among the Gentiles, Matthew 25 verses 31 to 46. Hear God's words. Proverbs 27 verse 11, my son, 
be wise, and make my heart glad, that I may answer him that reproacheth me. The rulers and the people of Israel both need the words of God more than anything else. God's words are sufficient to make them wise. Many men try to reproach God or make him ashamed of his righteous judgments and even blame him for causing evil. When the people of God know and understand his word, they can help others know what God is doing and why he is doing it. The Apostle Paul presented a similar in Romans. Romans 3 verse 4 God forbid, yeah, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. Many will attempt to judge God, saying that he is unjust and unfair, but God will prove them wrong by the wisdom of his words. Foresee the evil. Proverbs 27 verse 12, a prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. This proverb was already covered in Proverbs 22 verse 3. Notice it does not say that a prudent man foresees evil, but the evil. This again refers to the particular evil that will come on the nation of Israel. How is a prudent man able to foresee the evil? A prudent man will foresee the evil when he believes the warnings that God has given in his word. The King's Judgment Proverbs 27 verse 13, take his garment that is shirty for a stranger and take a pledge of him for a strange woman. The implied subject of this sentence is you. You take his garment. This proverb was already covered in Proverbs 20 verse 16. Fools in Israel have committed spiritual fornication by worshiping the false gods of the surrounding nations. That nation of Israel will be plunged into calamity because of their rejection of God's law. Because of Israel's past envy for the dainties and delicacies of the strange gods, they became surety with the surrounding nations for debts. The king was not supposed to take a garment as a pledge according to the law of Moses, but God instructed him to take the garment of foolish men in this particular situation. Count it a curse. Proverbs 27 verse 14, He that blesseth his friend with a loud voice, rising early in the morning, it shall be counted a curse to him. Even a blessing is considered a curse when it is bestowed at an inappropriate time and manner. In God's word, timing is important, Ecclesiastes 3 verse 7. A continual dropping. Proverbs 27 verses 15 to 16, a continual dropping in a very rainy day and a contentious woman are alike. Whosoever hideth her hideth the wind and the ointment of his right hand, which bereath itself. In contrast to the sweet-smelling ointment of good counsel in verse 9, the words of the contentious woman stink. In Proverbs, the contentious woman represents the false religious system of the world. She has a reputation for ungodly counsel and worldly wisdom. Those who are acquainted with the wisdom of the true God will not be deceived by the wisdom of the false. Ecclesiastes 10 verse 1 dead flies cause the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking savor, so doth a little folly him that is in reputation for wisdom and honor. Faithful Wounds of a Friend Proverbs 27 verse 17 iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. As a blacksmith forges a very fine weapon with the blows of his hammer, one friend can refine the good character of another with the word of God. A faithful waiter. Proverbs 27 verse 18, Whoso keepeth the fig tree shall eat the fruit thereof, so he that waiteth on his master shall be honored. Keep means to guard or tend, and wait means to serve, like a waiter at a restaurant. God chooses men for service and then rewards them based on their faithfulness. The kin of Israel is a servant of God who has been provided with all that he needs in order to perform the duties of his office, and God will honor the king who serves him faithfully. Friend to Friend Proverbs 27 verse 19, As in water face answereth to face, so the heart of man to man. Water acts as a mirror, reflecting an image of reality. The good word treasured up in a man's heart can transform the inner man of this friend. 
causing it to reflect the same reality. Never satisfied. Proverbs 27 verse 20, hell and destruction are never full, so the eyes of man are never satisfied. A person dies on earth every 11 seconds. The grave is never satisfied. It covets more and more men. Sadly, many of those who die descend directly into the torments of hell to pay for all the sins they've committed while living to satisfy their fleshly desires. Matthew 25 verse 46, Luke 16 verses 19 to 24. Romans 2 verse 5. The sinful nature of man causes him to struggle with envy, covetousness, and discontentment. The good news is, with the instruction of the wisdom of God's words, contentment can be learned. Philippians 4 verse 11. Refined Praise Proverbs 27 verse 21 as the fining pot for silver and the furnace for gold, so is a man to his praise. The fining pot and the furnace are used to burn up the dross and bring forth pure silver and gold, which can be used for a particular purpose. By comparing this proverb with the similar one found in Proverbs 17 verse 3, it can be understood that the Lord perfects the hearts of men with his word. In contrast, a man desires to perfect his own praise, as indicated by verses 1 and 2. God also uses chastisement as a type of refining fire to purify praise among Israel. 1 Peter 1 verse 7 that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Insufficient Punishment Proverbs 27 verse 22, Though thou shouldest bray a fool in a mortar among wheat with a pestle, yet will not his foolishness depart from him. Sometimes God's chastisement is not enough to purify his people. It was already noted in Proverbs 17 verse 10 that corporal punishment does not often work on a fool. The only hope for a fool is when he accepts the chastisement of God. Leviticus 26 verses 40 to 42, Proverbs 21 verse 11. Conclusion This chapter concludes with a passage addressed to the king about the sufficiency of food and clothing. When the king learns to trust in the words of God, he will be content with such things. Proverbs 27 verses 23 to 27, Be thou diligent to know the state of thy flocks and look well to thy herds. For riches are not forever, and doth the crown endure to every generation? The hay appeareth, and the tender grass showeth itself, and herbs of the mountains are gathered. The lambs are for thy clothing, and the goats are the price of the field. And thou shalt have goats milk enough for thy food, for the food of thy household, and for the maintenance for thy maidens. The king of Israel had literal herds and flocks, but the nation of Israel was also compared to sheep. God gave the nation prophets, priests, and kings to shepherd his people. Proverbs is a book of instruction for the king of Israel so that he may shepherd God's flock. Silver and gold may endure a fiery trial, but even they do not last forever. The king should choose to treasure up God's word in his heart and rely on God instead of his silver and gold. James 5 verse 3 Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rest of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. Summary God promised to provide Israel with everything they needed as long as they would obey him. Even during the difficult times which the young nation faced, God provided them with food and clothing, Exodus 16 verse 25, Deuteronomy 8 verses 1 to 6. Envy for the wealth of the world and their false gods caused them to break the covenant they made with the true God, which led to their downfall and spiritual poverty. There will come a time in Israel's history when they will once again have to choose between following the God of this world with its abundant provision or suffering the loss of all things by. Remaining faithful to the word of God. 
God will faithfully provide for the needs of his faithful servants and give them the strength to be content with what little they have. Dispensational Consideration Although written to instruct the king and the nation of Israel, this chapter is also applicable to believers living in the present dispensation of grace. Tomorrow holds no guarantees for anyone outside of what God has stated in his word. A man can spend his days in covetousness, serving himself as he pursues what pleases the flesh, or he can spend it in pursuit of the truth of the word of God. In this present time, envy of the wicked continues to motivate men to pursue physical wealth, and the love of truth still motivates men to pursue God's wisdom. A true friend will speak the truth of God, rightly divided, to strengthen the inner man and reflect the image that God desires to form in him. When men learn to trust in God's word, they learn to be content with what they possess. Physical wealth does not last forever, but spiritual wealth holds the promise of eternal life. Life Application Everything a believer possesses is by the grace of God. There is no cause for boasting. Ephesians 2 verses 8 to 10 For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. A believer's duty is to seek the wealth of others. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 24 Let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth. Believers cannot take physical riches to heaven with them, and contentment is something that can and should be learned. 1 Timothy 6 verses 6 to 8, But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. Philippians 4 verse 11, Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned, in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. Proverbs 28 verse 5, Evil men understand not judgment, but they that seek the Lord understand all things. Proverbs 28 emphasizes the differences between the lawbreakers and law keepers. Proverbs chapter 27, Homework. Concordance search, find the word friend in a King James Bible. Note that the book of Proverbs has more references to friend than any other book of the Bible, and Proverbs chapter 27 has more references than any other chapter in the book of Proverbs. The book of Luke comes in second place with 14 results. Read through these references in Proverbs and Luke to get a sound, biblical understanding of how the word is used in scripture. Notice there are those who are true friends, those who are making a pretense, and those for whom friendship is a matter of convenience. James 4 verse 4 Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Concordance search, find the words day of calamity in a King James Bible. Study each search result to understand that it refers to a very particular time in Israel's history and prophesy. The first use is found in the Song of Moses. Read Deuteronomy 31, 22, 32, 44. This song will be remembered and sang during the time of Israel's great tribulation, Revelation 15, verse 3. Concordance search, Use Bible Gateway to find the word reproach in all of its forms as used in the book of Proverbs. Study each of the reference and make a note of words that are used in conjunction with the word reproach in order to get a biblical understanding of what the word means. Then use Webster's 1828 Dictionary to define the word. Do the definitions agree? Additional study, the exact phrase, the evil, is found 95 times in a King James Bible. Each of these evils refers to a particular evil that differs according to the context. You might like to study this topic further as you have time and make a list of particular things identified with the evil. Hell, never full, read Isaiah 5 verses 13 to 16, 
then read the entire chapter for context. The nation of Israel caused hell to be enlarged to receive their dead bodies because they made a confederacy with the gods of the nations, and God judged them with righteous judgment. Israel like sheep, study the following verses which compare the nation of Israel to sheep and their rulers to shepherds. Numbers 27 15 19, 1 Kings 22 verse 17, Jeremiah 50 verse 6, Ezekiel 34 verse 12, Zechariah 13 verse 7, Matthew 9 verse 36, and John 10 verses 11 to 16.